continuation of the previous video about kidney so this video is about acid base regulation as we mentioned earlier so regulation of hydrogen ion h plus balance is similar in some ways to the regulation of other ions in the body for instance there must be a balance between the intake or production of h plus and h plus ions and nature removal of h plus from the body to achieve homeostasis and that is true for other ions the kidneys play a key role in regulating h plus removal from the body however precise control of extracellular fluid h plus concentration involves much more than simple elimination of h plus from by the kidney so multiple acid based buffering mechanisms multiple acid based buffering mechanisms are taking place involved in the blood cells and lungs also are essential in maintaining normal h plus concentrations in both the extracellular and intracellular fluids so in this chapter we consider the various mechanisms that contribute to the regulation of h plus concentration and special emphasis on control of renal h plus concentration and renal reabsorption production and excretion of bicarbonate ions or hco3 minus one of the key components of acid base control systems in body fluids first topic h plus concentration is precisely regulated precise h plus regulation is essential because the activities of almost all enzyme systems in the body are influenced by h plus concentration therefore changes in h plus concentration of alter virtually all cells and body functions compared with other ions the h plus concentration of the body fluids normally is kept at a low level for example the concentration of sodium ion extracellular fluid is about 3.5 million times as great as the normal concentration of h plus which averages only 0.00004 micron per day with this is important to the normal aliration aeration in h plus concentration in extracellular fluid is only about 1 million as great as normal aeration in sodium ion concentration thus the precision with which h plus is regulated emphasizes its importance to the various cell functions and acids and bases their definitions and meanings a hydrogen ion is a single free proton released from a hydrogen atom molecules containing hydrogen atoms that can release hydrogen ions in solutions are referred to as acids molecules containing hydrogen atoms that can release hydrogen ions in solutions are referred to as acids an example is hydrochloric acid hcl is a very common example we know that it ionizes in water to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions h plus and cl minus then likewise carbonic acid h2co3 h2co3 ionizes in water to form h plus and bicarbonate ions hco3 minus hco3 minus a base is an ion or a molecule that can accept an h plus accept base base accept an h plus for example it's co3 minus is a base because it can combine with h plus to form h2 co3 likewise hpo4 minus is a base by because it can accept an h plus to form h2po4 okay the proteins in the body also function as bases because some of the amino acids that make up proteins have net negative charge that readily accept h plus the protein hemoglobin in the red blood cell and proteins in the other cells of body among the are most important body's bases hemoglobin is a base the terms base and alkali are often used synonymously an alkali is a molecule formed by the combination of one or more of the alkaline metals alkaline metals in the sense sodium potassium lithium and so forth with a highly basic ion such as hydroxyl ion will be the oh minus the base portion of this molecules react quickly with h plus to remove it from solution they are therefore typical bases for similar reasons the term alkalose refers to excess removal of h plus from the body fluids in contrast to the excess addition of h plus which is referred to as acidosis removal of h plus yeah removal of h plus in case of alkalosis addition of h plus acidosis strong and weak acid and bases a strong acid is one that rapidly dissociates and releases especially large amounts of h plus in solution an example is hcl weak acids are less likely to dissociate their ions and therefore release h plus with less vigor an example is h2co3 a strong base is one of the react which reacts rapidly and strongly with h plus and therefore quickly removes h plus from a solution a typical example is oh minus which reacts with h plus to form water 
it typically weak base is h o3 minus because it binds with h plus much more weakly than this o h minus most acids and bases in the extracellular fluid that are involved in normal acid base regulation are weak acids and bases the most important ones we will discuss is carbonic acid and h o3 minus base normal h plus concentration and ph of body fluids and organs that occur in acidosis and alkalosis blood ph plus concentration blood h plus concentration is normally maintained with within tight limits around a normal value of about 0.00004 mcl and per liter 40 mcl and per liter normal variations that are about <coughs> normal variations are only about 3 to 5 mcl and mcl and per liter but under extreme conditions under extreme conditions h plus concentration can vary from as low as 10 mcl and per liter to as high as 160 mcl and per liter without causing death because h plus concentration normally is low and because this small numbers are comparison there is customary to express h plus concentration in logarithm scale using ph units ph is related to the actual h plus concentration by the following formula h plus concentration is expressed in equivalence per liter ph is equal to log 1 by concentration of h plus is equal to minus log h plus <coughs> minus log h plus for example normal concentration of h plus is 40 and it will ph will be minus log of that one is equal to 7.4 from this formula one can see that ph is inversely related to the h plus concentration ph is inversely related to the h plus concentration therefore a low ph corresponds to a high h plus concentration and a high ph corresponds to a low h plus concentration okay so the normal ph in of arterial blood is 7.4 we know that then whereas the ph of venous blood and interstitial fluids is about 7.35 because of the extra amounts of carbon dioxide released extra amounts of carbon dioxide released from the tissues to form h2co3 in these fluids because the normal ph of arterial blood is 7.4 a person is considered to have acidosis when the ph falls below this value and alkalosis when the ph rises above 7.4 the lower limit of ph at which a person can live more than a few hours is about 6.8 and the upper limit is about 8 intracellular ph usually is slightly lower than plasma ph because the metabolism of the cells produce acid especially h2 co3 h2 co3 is primarily the cause for this high ph depending on the type of cells the ph of intracellular fluids has been estimated to range between 6 and 7.4 hypoxia of the tissues and poor blood flow to the tissues can cause acid accumulation and will decrease the intracellular ph the ph of urine can range from 4.5 to 8 depending on the acid base status of the extracellular fluid kidneys play a major role in correcting abnormalities of extracellular fluid h plus concentration by excreting acids or bases at various various rates an ex- extreme example of an acidic body fluid is the hcl secreted into the stomach by the oxyntic or parietal cells of the stomach mucosa concentration of this cells is about 4 million times greater than the hydrogen concentration in blood which is point ph of 0.8 in the remainder of this chapter we discussed the regulation of extracellular fluid h plus concentration so next defending against changes in h plus concentration buffers lungs and kidneys three primary systems regulate the h plus concentration in the body fluid to prevent acidosis or alkalosis the chemical acid base buffer system of the body fluid which immediately combine with the acid or base to prevent excess changes in h plus concentration the respiratory center which regulate the removal of co2 and therefore h2 co3 from the extracellular fluid and the kidneys which can excrete either acid or alkali alkaline urine thereby readjusting the extracellular fluid h plus concentration toward normal during acidosis or alkalosis when there is a change in h plus concentration the buffer systems of the body 
fluids react within seconds to minimize the changes buffer systems do not eliminate h plus from or add h plus to the body but only keep them tied up until balance will be re-established the second line of defense is the respiratory system we just mentioned act within a few minutes to eliminate co2 and therefore h2co3 from the blood this first two lines of defense keep the H plus concentration from changing too much until the more slowly corresponding third line of defense, the kidneys, can eliminate the excess acid or base from the body. Although the kidneys are relatively slow to respond compared with other defenses, over a period of hours to several days, they are by far the most powerful of the acid base regulatory systems. So buffering of H plus in the body fluids. A buffer is any substance that can reversibly bind H plus. The general form of buffering reaction is buffer plus H plus gives H buffer. Vice versa. In this example, the free H plus combines with the buffer to form a weak acid. That is H buffer. H buffer nothing else but a weak acid. H buffer is a weak acid that can either remain as an unassociated molecule or dissociate back to the buffer and H plus. When the H plus concentration increases, the reaction is forced to the right and more H plus binds to the buffer as long as buffer is available. Conversely, when the H plus concentration decreases, the reaction shifts towards left and H plus is released from the buffer. In this way, changes in H plus concentration are minimized. The importance of body fluid buffers can be quickly realized if one considers the Low concentration of H plus in the body fluids and a relatively large amount of acids produced by the body each day. For example, about 80 milli equivalents of H plus is either ingested or produced each day by metabolism. Whereas H plus concentration of the body fluid normally is only about 0.00004 mg per liter. Without buffering, the daily production and ingestion of acids would cause lethal changes in body fluid H plus concentration. The action of acid-base buffers can perhaps best be explained by considering the buffer system that is quantitatively the most important in the extracellular fluid the bicarbonate buffer system bicarbonate buffer system bicarbonate buffer system the bicarbonate buffer system consists of a water solution that contains two ingredients a weak acid h2co3 and a bicarbonate salt such as sodium bicarbonate <coughs> h2co3 is formed in the body by the action reaction of CO2 with H2O. So HCO2 plus H2O carbonic anhydride acts as an enzyme creating H2CO3. This reaction is low and exceedingly small amount of H2CO3 is formed unless the enzyme carbonic anhydride is. That's an enzyme. It is present. The enzyme is specifically abundant in the walls of lung alveoli where CO2 is released. Carbonic anhydride is also present in the epithelial cells of renal tubules where CO2 reacts with H2O to form H2CO3. H2CO3 ionized weakly to form small amount of H plus and H2O3 minus. So H2CO3 gives H plus plus H2O3 on dissociation. The reverse is also true. Like H plus plus H2O3 minus gives H2CO3. This reaction is low and extremely small. So the second component of system, bicarbonate salt occurs predominantly as NaHCO3 in the extracellular fluid. NaHCO3 in the extracellular fluid. NaHCO3 ionizes almost completely for, to form HCO3 minus and Na plus. So NaHCO3 gives Na plus plus HCO3 minus. Now putting the entire system together, we have the following. CO2 plus H2O gives H2CO3. Then H plus plus HCO3 minus plus Na plus. Because of the dissociation of H2CO3, the H plus concentration is extremely small. Because of the weak dissociation of H2CO3, the H plus concentration is extremely small. When a strong acid such as HCl is added to the bicarbonate buffer solution, the increased H plus released from the acid HCl buffered is buffered by HCO3 minus. H plus plus HCO3 minus gives H2CO3 gives CO2 plus H2O and the products are CO2 and H2O. As a result, more, more H2CO3 is formed causing increased CO2 and H2O production. From this reaction, so you can see that H plus from the strong acid HCl reacts with HCO3 minus to form a very weak acid H2 
two three that's a very weak acid we know that and which in turn forms co2 and x2 the excess co2 greatly stimulates respiration which eliminates the co2 from the extracellular fluid the opposite reactions take place when a strong base such as sodium hydroxide is added to the bicarbonate buffer solution NaOH plus H2CO3 giving NaHCO3 plus H2 NaOH plus H2CO3 NaHCO3 plus H2 in this case the OH minus from the NaOH combines with H2CO3 to form additional HCO3 minus thus the weak base NaHCO3 replaces the strong acid base NaOH at the same time the concentrations of H2CO3 decrease because it reacts with NaOH causing more CO2 to combine with H2 to replace the H2CO3 so CO2 plus H2O giving H2CO3 plus H2 and HCO3 minus plus H plus that HCO3 will combine with Na. The net result therefore is a tendency for the CO2 levels in the blood to decrease but the increase decrease in CO2 in the blood inhibits respiration and decreases the rate of CO2 expiration. The rise in the blood HCO3 minus that occurs in, is compensated for by the increased renal excretion of HCO3 minus. The next term is Henderson Hazelwald's equation. This equation is a very important one. So, that equation <coughs> from this equation, it is apparent that an increase in HCO3 minus concentration causes the pH to rise. And we try to learn about this. pH is equal to 6.1 plus log HCO3 minus by 0.03 into PO2, PCO2. This one is the Henderson Hazelbalch equation. And with it, one can calculate the pH of a solution if the molar concentration of HCO3 minus and the PCO2 are known. From the Henderson Hazelbalch equation, it is apparent that an increase in HCO3 minus concentration causes the pH to rise, shifting the acid base balance towards alkalosis. An increase in PCO2 causes the pH to decrease shifting the acid base balance towards acidosis. This equation in addition to defining the determinants of normal pH regulation and acid base balance in the extracellular fluid provide insight into the physiological control of acid and base composition of the extracellular fluid. HCO3 minus concentration is regulated mainly by the kidneys whereas the PCO2 extracellular fluid is controlled by the rate of respiration. By increasing the rate of respiration, the lungs remove CO2 from the plasma and by decreasing respiration, the lungs elevate PCO2. Normal physiological acid basic homeostasis is from the coordinated effects of both the both of these organs, the lungs and the kidneys and acid basic disorders occur when one of or both of these control mechanisms are impaired, thus altering either the HCO3- minus concentration or PCO2 of the extracellular fluid. And disturbances of acid base balance is from a primary change in extracellular fluid HCO3 minus concentration. We are referred to as metabolic acid base disorders. Which are the metabolic acid base disorders? Acidosis caused by the primary decrease in HCO3 minus concentration is termed as metabolic acidosis, whereas alkaloisis caused by primary increase in HCO3 minus concentration is called metabolic alkylosis. Acidosis caused by an increase in PCO2 is called a respiratory acidosis and the alkalosis caused by the decrease in PCO2 is termed as a respiratory alkalosis. Buffer power is determined by the amount and relative concentration of the buffer components. The bicarbonate buffer system is the most important extracellular buffer. Next is phosphate buffer system quickly. Although the phosphate buffer system is not important as an extracellular fluid buffer, it plays a major role in buffering renal tubule flu tubular fluid and intracellular fluids. The main elements of the phosphate buffer system are H2PO4 and HPO4-. When a strong acid such as HCl is added to a mixture of these two substances, the hydrogen is accepted by the base HCO HPO4- and converted to H2PO4. So HCl plus Na2HPO4 gives NaH2PO4 plus NaCl. The result of this reaction is the strong acid HCl is replaced by an additional amount of weak acid H NaH2PO4 
and is increased in pH is minimized. When a strong base such as NaO is added to the buffer system, the OH minus is buffered by the H2PO4 to form additional amounts of HPO4 minus plus H2. That means NaO is plus NaH2PO4 gives NaH2HPO4 plus H2O. In this case, a strong base NaO is added and treated for a weak base NaH2PO4 causing only a slight, slightly increase in pH. The phosphate buffer system has a pH of 6.8 which is not far from the normal pH of 7.4 in the body fluids. The situation allows the system to operate near its maximum buffering power. However, the concentration in extracellular fluid is low at only about 8% of the concentration of the bicarbonate buffer. Therefore, the total buffering power of the phosphate system in the extracellular fluid is much less than that of the bicarbonate buffering system. In contrast to the minor role as an extracellular buffer, the phosphate buffer is especially important in the tubular fluids of kidneys by two reasons. Phosphate usually become greatly concentrated in the tubules, thereby increasing the buffering power of the phosphate system. Tubular fluid usually has a considerable power, lower pH than the extracellular fluid does, bringing the operating range of the buffer closer to the pH of 6.8 of the system. The phosphorus buffer system is also important in buffering intracellular fluid because the concentrations of phosphate in this fluid is many times that in the extracellular fluid. Also, the pH of intracellular fluid is lower than that of the extracellular fluid and therefore is usually closer to the pK of the phosphate buffer system compared with the extracellular fluid. And proteins are important. Intracellular buffers. Respiratory regulation of acid balance, second line of defense, control of extracellular fluid CO2 concentration by the lung and increase in the ventilation elimination CO2. So, pulmonary expiration of CO2 balances metabolic formation of CO2. That is a major point. Then increasing alveolar ventilation decreases extracellular fluid H plus concentration and raises pH. Increased H plus concentration stimulates alveolar ventilation. Then buffering power of the respiratory system is also very important. Then impairment of lung function can cause respiratory acidosis. Okay. Next, renal control of acid-base balance. The kidneys control acid-base balance by excreting either acidic or basic urine. Excreting acidic or basic urine. Excreting acidic urine reduces the amount of acid in the extracellular fluid whereas excreting basic urine obviously removes base from the extracellular fluid. Where from where the extracellular fluid not just no right body. It is extracellular fluid. The overall mechanism by which the kidneys excrete acid or base urine as follows. Large numbers of HCO3- is filtered continuously into the tubules and if they are excreted into the urine, this removes the base from the blood. Large number of H plus ions are also released into the tubular lumen of the tubular epithelial cells, thus removing acid from the blood. If more H plus is secreted than HCO3- is filtered, there will be a net loss of acid from the extracellular fluid. Conversely, if more HCO3- is filtered than H plus is secreted, there will be a net loss of base. Each day of the body produces about 80 m equivalent of non-volatile acids, mainly from the metabolism of proteins. These acids are called non-volatile because they are not H2CO3- and therefore cannot be excreted by the lungs. The primary mechanism for removal of these acids from the body is renal excretion. Renal excretion. The kidneys must also prevent the loss of a bicarbonate in the urine, a task that is ultimately more important than the excretion of non-volatile acids. Each day the kidney filters about 4320 mg equivalent of HCO3- under normal conditions. Almost all this is reabsorbed from the tubules, thereby conserving most all of this absorbed, reabsorbed from the body, thereby conserving the primary buffer system of the extracellular fluid. Let's discuss later. Both the reabsorption of HCO3- and the excretion of H+, are accomplished through the process of H+, concentration by the tubules. Both the reabsorption of HCO3- and excretion of H+, are accomplished through the process of H+, secretion by the tubules. H plus secretion by the tubules. Because the HCO3 minus must react with the secreted H plus to form H2CO3 because it can be reabsorbed. 
H plus must be secreted each day just to reabsorb the filtered HCO3 minus. Then an additional 80 m equivalent of H plus must be filtered, secreted to rid of the body's non volatile acids produced each day. For a total of 4,400 4, m equivalent of H plus secreted into the tubular fluid each day, and there is a reduction in the extracellular fluid H plus concentration or alkalosis, the kidneys secrete less H plus and fail to reabsorb all the filtered HCO3 minus, thereby increasing the excretion of HCO3 minus. Because HCO3 minus normally buffers H plus in the extracellular fluid, this loss of HCO3 minus is same as adding an H plus to the extracellular fluid. Therefore, in alkalosis, the removal of HCO3 minus raises the extracellular fluid H plus concentration back towards normal. In acidosis, the kidneys secrete additional H plus and do not excrete HCO3 minus into the urine, but reabsorb all the filtered HCO3 minus and produce new HCO3 minus which is added back to the extracellular fluid. This action reduces the extracellular fluid H plus concentration back towards normal. This the kidneys regulate extracellular fluid H plus concentration through three fundamental mechanisms. Secretion of H plus, reabsorption of filtered HCO3 minus, production of new HCO3 minus. All this process are accomplished through the same basic mechanism. First, secretion of H plus and reabsorption of HCO3 minus by the renal tubules. Hydrogen and secretion and HCO3 minus reabsorption occur in virtually all parts of the tubule except the descending and ascending thin limbs of loop of NU. HCO3 minus reabsorption along the tubule. Keep in mind that for each HCO3 reabsorbed, the H plus must be secreted. For each HCO3 minus reabsorbed, the H plus must be secreted. About 80 to 90 percent of the HCO3 minus reabsorption and H plus secretion occurs in the proximal tubule. So only a small amount of HCO3 minus flows to the distal tubule and collecting dust. In the thick ascending limb of Henle, ascending loop of Henle increase. Moving to the upside, ascending limb of loop of Henle, another 10 percent of filtered HCO3 minus is reabsorbed and the the remainder of the reabsorption taken place in the distal tubule and the collecting ducts. Mechanism of HCO3 minus is reabsorbed also involved. Tubular secretion of H plus, but different tubular segments accomplish this task differently. H plus is secreted by secondary active transport in the early tubular segments. The epithelial cells of the proximal tubule, the thick segment of the ascending loop of Henle, and the early distal tubule all secrete H plus into the tubular fluid by sodium hydrogen counter transport. Underline sodium hydrogen counter transport. The secondary active secretion of H plus is coupled with the transport of Na plus into the cell at the luminal membrane of the sodium hydrogen exchange protein. And the energy for H plus secretion against the concentration gradient is derived by from the sodium gradient favoring Na plus movement into the cell. This gradient is established by the sodium potassium adenosine triphosphate pump. Sodium potassium adenosine triphosphate pump in the basolateral membrane. About 95% of the bicarbonate reabsorbed in this manner requiring about 4000 m equivalent of H plus to be secreted each day by the tubules. This mechanism however does not establish a very high H plus concentration in the tubular fluid. The tubular fluid becomes very acidic only in the collecting tubule and collecting ducts. The secretory process begins when CO2 either diffuses into the tubular cells or is formed by the metabolism in the tubular epithelial cells. CO2 under influence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase combines with H2O to form H2CO3. This dissociate into HCO3 minus and H plus. The H plus is secreted from the cell into the tubular lumen by sodium hydrogen counter current counter transport sodium hydrogen counter transport that is when Na plus moves from the lumen of the tubule to the interior of the cell it first combines with the carrier protein in the luminal border of the cell membrane at the same time NH plus in the interior of the cell combined with the car carrier protein the Na plus moves into the cell down a counter Concentration gradient that has been established by the 
sodium potassium ATP is pumped in the vas vasolateral membrane. The gradient for Na plus movement into the cell then, then provides energy for moving H plus in the opposite direction from the interior of the cell to the tubular lumen. The HCO3 minus generated in the cell when H plus dissociates from H2CO3 minus. Then moves downward across the basolateral membrane into the renal interstitial fluid and peritubular capillary fluid. And the net result is that for every H plus secreted into the tubular lumen, the HCO3 minus enters the blood. Then filtered HCO3 minus is reabsorbed by interaction with H plus in the tubules. Bicarbonate ions do not readily permeate to the luminal membranes in the renal tubular cells. Therefore, HCO3 minus that is filtered by the glomerulus cannot be directly reabsorbed. Instead, HCO3 minus is reabsorbed by a special process in which at first combines with H plus to form H2CO3, which eventually becomes CO2 and H2O. And this reabsorption of HCO3 minus is initiated by a reaction in the tubule between HCO3 minus filtered at the glomerulus and H plus secreted by the tubular cells. The H2CO3 formed then dissociates into HCO2 and H2O. The CO2 can move easily across the tubular membrane, therefore, it instantly diffuses into the tubular cell where it recombines with H2 under the influence of carbonic anhydrase to generate a new H2CO3 molecule. This H2CO3 in turn dissociates from HCO3 minus and H plus. The HCO3 minus then diffuses through the basolateral membrane into the interstitial fluid and is taken up into the peritubular capillary blood. The primary active secretion of H plus in the intercellular cells of the late distal and collecting tubule is also there. That combination of excess H plus with phosphate and ammonia buffers in the tubule generates new HCO3 minus. Phosphate buffer system carries excess H plus into the urine and generates new CO2. Excretion of excess H plus and generation of new HCO3 by the ammonia buffer system. Then chronic acidosis increase NH4 plus excretion. Regulation of renal tubular H plus secretion. Renal correction of acidosis. Increased excretion of H plus and addition of HCO3 minus to the extracellular fluid. Then renal correction of alkalosis. Decreased tubular secretion of H plus and increased excretion of HCO3 minus. Alkalosis increases the ratio of HCO3 minus bar H plus in renal tubular fluid. Clinical causes of renal acid base disorders. Respiratory acidosis results from decreased ventilation and increased PCO2. Respiratory alkalosis results from increased ventilation and decreased PCO2. Alkalosis. Metabolic acidosis results from decreased extracellular fluid HCO3 concentration. Renal Tubular acidosis, diarrhea, vomiting of intestinal contents, diabetes mellitus, ingestion of acids, and chronic renal failure. These are some causes and some specific conditions for this. So, metabolic ankylosis results from increased intracellular fluid HCO3 minus concentration. So, some causes include administration of diuretics except the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, excess al aldosterone, vomiting of gastric contents, ingestion of alkaline drugs. Treatment of acidosis and alkalosis is important. Clinical measurements of analysis of acid base disorders and com complex acid base disorders and use of the acid base nonogram for diagnosis and use of anion gap to diagnose acid base disorders. These are very important.